Hi everybody, I'm Giancarlo. And I'm Felicia. And this is a review of... <laughs> Steampunk Rally. Includes 108 dice. <gasps> My magic number's 109. So close. They're Miss... Roxley games. So close. Imagine they make the Felicia special edition <laughs> and there's 109 <laughs> dice inside. It should be the expansion. The 109 that, dice. Yeah. $10 for one extra die with your face <laughs> on it on one side. In Steampunk Rally, you'll play as a famous real-life inventor entering their steampunk invention in a race of the century rally. Players will use steam, heat, electricity, and their crazy genius to go through obstacles and jury-rig their invention throughout the race to keep them from blowing up and to cross the finish line. The Swiss Alps side of the map's been set, with the start tile here. Three randomly chosen map tiles here, followed by the finish line tile and town tile here. Tokens and dice are separated in their respective pool. These four decks have been shuffled and separated into gold parts, silver, copper, and boost cards. Each player will have chosen an inventor, placing its pawn on the start tile and take their two corresponding starting invention cards. These, as with all other invention cards added to their machine, must be attached so as to form at least one valve connecting the cards. They'll also have a light bulb token green side up and a damage gauge with the zero showing. The play direction token is set and you're ready for the race. The game consists of rounds of four phases each in order which are played by all players simultaneously. Drafting will have all players take a card from the top of each deck They'll choose and decide whether they'll keep it or discard it, immediately gaining a choice of resources as listed here from the supply. These are steam dice in blue, heat dice in red, electricity dice in yellow, and or cogs. Should they keep it and it's an invention, as stated before, they need to make sure they can attach it via another half valve. You can move your invention parts around so as to fit them all correctly. Should you keep a boost card, one that gives you an effect, place it under your gauge for future usage. When chosen, pass the remaining cards to the player in the direction stated by the play direction. Repeat the draft until no cards remain. For now, we'll skip the vent phase and go back to it a little later on. Let's get right into the race phase. First, you'll start off by rolling the dice you've accumulated by discarding cards for their resources during the draft. If you have any cogs, you can spend one to re-roll a die or increase the value of a die's pip by one. Then you will activate your machine by allocating dice on specific parts to generate an effect. You can place one or many dice, as many as there are available spaces on a card. Total them up and divide by the number listed here rounding down. That is how many times the effect will trigger. For example, placing a 4 and a 6 will total 10. Then divide by 3 will trigger this effect 3 times. Should a card have a star, it means for each die placed there, regardless of a value, it will trigger the effect once. Effects are conveniently listed in back of your reference card and range from acquiring new dice, which are rolled and usable right away, to venting or removing dice from cards, gaining shields or moving. Each effect must fully trigger before allocating more dice to another part of your invention. And obviously, you choose in what order the dice are placed. Also, once per round, you can turn over this light bulb to generate effects as listed on all your cards with this icon on the top left corner. Obviously, moving is essential to the game. Every time you activate this icon, you'll move up a space. Now, some spaces have rough terrain which can damage your invention. When you enter a space with this icon, you take damage equal to the value there by turning your damage gauge accordingly. Should you ever reach minus 8, you immediately lose a card from your invention and reset it back to minus 7. Contrarily, if you have 3 shields and go up 1, you get a cog instead and return it to plus 3. Shortcuts can save you time but wreak havoc on your invention. However, there are measures you can take to ignore terrain penalties and that's by doing a smooth motion denoted by the same gold colored icon. So plan accordingly. Other spaces allow you to trade in any number of cogs for specific dice. Lastly, the damage phase is where you check your gauge. If it's in the negative, you will lose that many cards of your choosing from your machine and reset your dial to zero. Should you ever lose your inventor's cockpit, you'll explode. When that happens, you move your pawn one space behind the last player 
unless that player is you, in which case you move back one. You'll discard all your machine parts and then reset your gauge to zero. When done this phase, we go to end of round. All unused dice are discarded, flip your bob tokens back and flip the direction token to start a new round. Let's get back to the venting phase. Here, players will need to, well, vent the waste that is taking up the slots in your invention. Besides effects that can do that during the race phase, a player may spend cogs to remove these dice. Every cog removes two pips from one die or one pip from two dice. When they reach zero, remove the die and return it to the general supply. And then the game resumes with the race phase. When a player crosses the finish line, one final round is played and the player who is the furthest wins. Ties are broken by the player with the most invention parts. Steampunk Rally has all the elements that, in my opinion, define a great game. Great theme with beautiful artwork and solid mechanics that offer players a perfect blend of tactics and choice and a pleasant sense of randomness and luck that can be mitigated. And more importantly, it's fun. I love the double-edged sword idea that the more powerful the effect and the higher dice rolls required for it will make it harder for you to vent them in the next round. Really well thought out details of the game are always present, from the great components and design to the rulebook which is very clear and concise. The mechanics simply embellish the theme. I love how when you push your machine to its limits, parts fly off in catastrophic mayhem as you jury rig to keep it from exploding. The image of a tread or giant bicycle wheel getting ripped apart and giant metallic spider legs taking their place as you roam the Swiss Alps or the hover drone is fantastic. Yes, the boards are double-sided. Each inventor plays a little differently and these challenge tokens really add to replay value of the game. My only little hiccup with this game is the simultaneous play aspect of it. Yes, I'm aware that taking turns would make this game last forever, but we also like to see what others are doing and making sure there's no accounting errors <clears throat> or cheating. So we all partnered up and made one person check the other and vice versa. This was great at five or six, but it does tend to get pretty long at seven or eight. Besides that, well, just look at the pros versus the cons. Need I say more? This game scores a well-deserved nine out of 10. Everything the movie Wild Wild West should have been. There's not a lot of good Canadian companies mm -hmm. for board gaming. Sure. Yeah, so it's these guys, them. yeah, these guys are uh, one of them. And uh, yeah, look. Oh yeah, there's little, little maple, maple leaf. leaf. And there's another game we're gonna review coming soon. What's his name? Orin Bishops. He yeah, sounds he's like a he's designer. From, uh, Roxley. So cool. They have other. Sounds games? like he's from Roxley. Yeah, there's one more actually, and it's another good game too. But I don't want to spoil it. I mean, I'm not crazy no, about. Spoilers. I'm not crazy about. The other oh my god, Grey's Anatomy is tonight. It's called Super Motherload. The Final Valley. No spoilers. Okay, continue. Sorry. <laughs> I just got really excited. Oh, uh, look. How is this show still on? It's 12 seasons. <sighs> if two pregnant women get into a fist fight, it's like a mech battle between two fetuses. Huh? 